Hello everybody, um, my name is Renan and I'll be showing you how to get started playing uh, Dominions 5 um, and I'll be showing off my favorite nation in the game at the same time. Uh, please forgive any shitty gameplay and uh, any other mistakes I make. I generally don't uh, record videos of myself doing anything. Uh, so this is one of my first time doing something like this, and also if you notice there is no game audio, that is because after googling about this for like an hour straight, I have no clue how to make my stupid recording program find the audio for, you know, anything going on on my screen. I can, I can hear it on my headphones, I cannot hear it anywhere else. Anyways. <sighs> Dominion's 5. So, once you launch the game, you get this. Ignore everything except the Create World button. That's basically starting game. Uh, we're gonna go with a random map for... We're gonna go with medium uh, province, 15 provinces per player. Um, just ignoring all of this. Just keeping it as default settings. So, normal amounts of water, reverse caves, uh, map wraps around left right. Excellent. Um, I will be showing off how to play Nazca, which is uh, a nation from the Middle Ages. You'll see uh, what that means in a second. So I'll name it Nazca Casting Game because, sure. Alright, so um, you get to select one of three ages in the game. Early age, basically everyone has, um, I mean every single age has different um, flavors to some extent, uh, like early age is where uh, everyone has shitty weapons for the most part and shitty armor, but the mages have um, high magic abilities in fewer amounts of paths. So, for example, this guy might be really great at fire magic and just fire magic, but he is really, really great at it. Um, late Ages is the opposite of that. Everybody has uh, good equipment. Most people have good equipment. Um, mages have um, more spread of paths that um, they have access to, but they're not as uh, godlike amazing in... Uh, their path, so the mage would know, say, fire, water, and earth. Um, he wouldn't be the god of fire or anything, but uh, he'd know more uh, various options. Uh, and the Middle Ages is basically the middle between the two. Uh, people have uh, okay armor and weapons, and magic is also okay. Uh, <laughs> that's basically the shortest explanation that is available for this. Um, I basically just reiterated what is written for each of the nations, uh, each of the ages. Um, so we're gonna go with about, um, let's say, eight um, nations for the game, including us. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, for us, we will select Nazca, Kingdom of the Sun. Um, we are in a crocracy of winged living humanoids ruled by mummified dead kings. Uh, basically, think. Uh, Aztecs plus ancient Egypt's ancient Egypt uh, and you have Nazca <sighs> so um, this screen uh, tells us a short explanation of what our nation is um, pause the video read it uh, lore doesn't really matter if you're trying to learn a game lore can be learned whenever and uh, at your own leisure um, the national features is what we care about. Um, it tells us that our guys uh, fly, most of them at least, are cold resistant, commanders become mummies on death, which is super important. Uh, we like cold scale plus one, and will be explained in a second. Our military is flying units, free recruits of low quality, reanimated dead, and sacred sun guard, which we will basically never use because I'm a terrible human being. Our magic is fire, earth, air, death, and astral, and a few others. 
um, our priests are powerful because one of our guys is a level 3 priest, which means, which is basically the highest recruitable priest level, um, and our buildings are primitive forts, but we can basically upgrade them to be um, at the same level as the other nations of Middle Age, so shrug. Um, I will show you the units um, once we get into the game. Uh, hardly hardly important quite right now. So, um, this is the screen for designing our uh, pretender, which is basically our um, god, um, for the sake of argument. When you left click on this picture over here, you get to choose from all the options. Um, for the sake of speed, I suppose I'm not gonna really go through all the potential options we have. Uh, if they're sep but uh, they're separated by dominion, so um, that basically means they're starting dominion. Like I choose this person, their dominion starts at one. This little candle, one, and then it costs points to buy up. Um, if I start, if I select this demolish guy, it starts at three already. It can't go lower. I'm right clicking, which should make it go lower, but it doesn't. Left, right. So um, we will be making him imprisoned, which basically means for most of the game he will just not exist uh, as a unit. He'll be taking a nap. Um, then we have to select the magic we will be going for. Um, he is an immobile pretender, meaning he cannot move. If you um, instead of left clicking, if you right click him here, uh, it says um, magically powerful, blah blah blah, lacking a body, he is unable to move between provinces. Um, basically, he'll just sit in our capital once he gets out of his prison. Um, so the magic we'll be choosing will be for the bless effect. Bless effect is something that uh, affects. Uh, units in the game that are deemed holy units. Um, they receive the bless effect once they have been blessed in combat using a spell that blesses units. Um, and bless effects vary quite a bit and we will be getting quite a lot of them because um, we have an imprisoned guy and a bunch of design points to spend on this. So fire three, air three, water three, Earth 3. Um, normally, um, I'll show this with Astral, uh, it takes you to four, you have to get four points to get the bless points for it, because you will later spend the bless points on natural options. Um, however, if you have three points in all of these four paths, or three points in all of these paths, uh, you just get the threes. Uh, and obviously, I mean, if you spend more, you get more. Um, so, uh, three in those, three in there, four in death, three in nature, and four in blood. Um, this bless was, um, I mean, I, I doubt it's super uh, um, original, I suppose, but um, my friend Aran helped me develop this, and I imagine I completely butchered the proper pronunciation of his name, but uh, usually I just read it, so I don't say it. Anyways, so the highlighted bits are what we can choose for our to spend our blast points, because we, for example, we have three points of fire, so we can only spend it on either one, two, two three, etc. You get the idea. Um, so we will be picking up attack skill, which gives us plus two attack to our call units when they're blessed. We'll be picking up major shock resistance, which will give them um, electricity protection. Um, water will go towards defense skill. Earth will go towards strength. Uh, astro uh, so fire is they hit more accurately. Air is they don't die to lightning. Water is they get hit less often. Earth is they hit harder. Astral is um, they don't, uh, they resist certain spells, like resistible spells, better. The death is, um, withering weapons, which means when they hit shit, that shit's, if it fails a magic resistance check, which, surprise, um, 
they start aging really quickly. Um, and if a unit is aging really quickly and it's not something that lives for like hundreds or thousands of years, it's going to have a bad time in a few rounds of combat. It's going to get old and it's going to start having problems. Um, then four blood will take blood surge, which basically means when they hit stuff, when they kill stuff, they get, um, they start hitting more accurately, harder, uh, have more defense, and get tired slower. And nature, honestly, just more HP, more HP, more HP. <clears throat> now for our Dominion, uh, we will be going for Cold 3, because um, our favorite is Cold 1, um, but honestly, this gives us extra design points, and it's not nearly as bad to have Cold 3, or I guess Heat 3, um, but it's especially not bad since we already like Cold 1, so it's only two points um, into the side we don't want. Um, we will have Growth 3 because Growth 3 is amazing, it gives us more uncommon, uh, and it makes our provinces grow, which means more money over, uh, is... they produce more money as time goes on. Uh, we don't really need production, productivity. Um, we don't particularly need order, but we... Uh, I don't actually remember the exact run down here, so... Um, we can pick up some order if we have extra points left. I think I can, I, we can actually just leave it at zero, zero uh, productivity. Um, and I think yeah, we can go for one more um, luck. We can't afford another um, Dominion Candle, sadly. We can't afford any more magic paths, so basically this is what we're going for, and we shall go into the game now. Um, this, we just get to name our god. Um, screw this, why not? Because I'm an original. Um, so this is me enabling um, minor story events, which is just events. We can have story graphs, score graphs to be able to compare ourselves to the AI easier. Hall of Fame entries is certain units become uh, famous and just get cool bonuses every so often. Um, yeah, people do it for fun mostly. Uh, renaming, I just turn it on because honestly, if I ever want to rename anything, why not? Um, keeping everything else default. Uh, Thrones of Ascension. Uh, let's go for like eight level two thrones. Um, thrones of Ascension is basically the point system of the game. Plus, uh, you get bonuses when you capture a throne. So we have eight thrones in the game, oh, and they are like level two difficulty, which means they give you medium bonuses and are they are mediumly protected. Um, that's basically I think all of us messing with uh, mechanics. So let's start.